this here is a Nissan Leaf battery module. A Nissan Leaf automobile has 48 of these stacked underneath the passenger compartment. They are nominally 8 volts, but if you look inside in here, there's actually four pouch cells inside. So each pouch cell is 30 amp hours and about 4 volts nominally. Now inside of the module, they have these pouch cells in a 2 series, 2 parallel. So two pouch cells are attached here to here, and then they're in parallel to make 60 amp hour. And then the next two pouch cells are attached here to here, and they're connected inside. So between the positive and the negative terminal, you have 8 volts differential. Now this center terminal is the sense terminal. It's used by the Nissan LEAF battery management system um, to maintain battery voltage so that these cells and those cells all have the same voltage. Um, but no current is actually drawn from this, and so it's a smaller connector. Now these are lithium magnesium cells. They are um, less likely to burst into flame than some of the other chemistries. It is a prismatic cell, it means it's a rectangular prism because they're square pouches, and it is not cylindrical, and so because the cylinders will maintain themselves, these guys need external pressure, so they have to be clamped this way um, when they're used. So you can, you can hold on to them unclamped, but if you're going to be charging or discharging, you need to clamp them. And so they need to be clamped to the same size as they are in the Nissan LEAF, which is exactly 1.333 inches, so one and a third inch. Um, so I'm going to be putting six of these in series and parallel. So I'm going to have two of them in parallel to go from about 55 amp hours to 110 amp hours, and then I'm going to have three sets of those two parallel, so th three sets in series, so 8, 16, 24 volts total. So here's a diagram. Physical layout is six modules. Notice that these two modules are aligned the same direction. These two are flipped, so the plus and minus are reverse, and then these are flipped back in the same orientation. So I'm going, these two are going to be in parallel, these two are in parallel, and these two here are in parallel. Now because they're in parallel, I need to connect these sense terminals together, and the negative terminals together, and the positive terminals together, to keep them all in parallel. But I also need to put them in series. So what I'm going to do is have this guy extend across like that. So the negative terminals here are connected to the positive terminals there. And my positive terminals here are going to be connected to the negative terminals of the next set. So this will be my overall negative, and this up here will be my overall positive 24 volts, because I have 8 volts here, another 8 to 16, another 8 to 24 volts. It is important that these sense terminals be kept connected. The reason it's so important to keep these guys connected is that you want the pouch cells on this cell module and the pouch cells on that module to maintain the exact same voltage so they get discharged at the exact same rate so none of these pouch cells inside the modules get lower or higher than any of the others to get it out of balance. That's the uh, plan. Let's do the actual physical layout. I'm using 3 quarter inch plywood as my clamping end pieces. I made them extra tall so that I could mount accessories such as an amp hour meter, Anderson connector, and circuit breaker to them as well. Plywood has the advantages that is non-conductive, easy to cut and drill, and inexpensive. The main disadvantage is that it is potentially combustible, but I'm more concerned with the lithium in the batteries than the plywood. I just used the holes in the modules as a template to drill four quarter inch holes for my quarter twenty threaded rod used to clamp the modules. I drilled small pilot holes, clamped both boards together and transferred the holes so I knew they would match, and then expanded them to quarter inch. When cutting threaded rod, make sure you have a nut on each piece before you cut it. Unless you have a very steady hand, the cutoff wheel will deform the threads. So having a nut you can use to chase the deformed threads is very useful. I used nuts, lock washers, and fender washers on the threaded rod then stack the six modules onto one end cap. Note that the middle set of two modules has a reversed polarity to enable my series bus bars to work correctly between pairs. I've found that six modules is about the maximum weight I want for a single man portable battery unit.
Then I put the top cap on and screwed down alternating threaded rods until all four corners were exactly eight inches apart. That is one and one third inch for each of the six modules. You need to cut the threaded rods long enough so that you can get the hardware on them before clamping pressure is achieved, so you will have some extra left over after you clamp it. You can either cut it off or just live with it. This next step is very important. Because we're going to be putting modules in parallel with high current bus bars, we must verify that they are very close to each other in voltage. If you connect two modules that are not at the same voltage, the higher voltage module will charge the lower voltage module at a very high current level until they equalize. This can damage your batteries, spot weld your bus bars in place, or even cause a fire in the worst case. So make sure that your modules start off all at the same voltage. The guy I bought the modules from included some nickel coated copper bus bar. I didn't think they were heavy enough for 175 amps, but they're overkill to tie together the sense terminals. Because it only has two holes and the only critical measurement is the hole centers, I just measured them by hand. Instead of buying expensive electrically isolated tools, I wrapped electrical tape over my screwdriver so that if it falls, it's less likely to bridge two connections and cause excitement. For the larger bus bars that need multiple holes precisely spaced, I printed out a template and used that for my setter punches. You could also do this with a milling machine. If you mess them up slightly, you can always drill the holes out just a bit overly large to compensate. I have a drill press, but didn't bother to put it to use because I was only making a small number of bus bars. I started with a 9 16th drill. Here's where a drill press would have been nice. Using my hand drill, I had to step up from the 9 16ths to a 13 64ths and then do the final quarter inch hole that fits M6 screws on the leaf modules. You have to file your holes clean so the bus bar is flat. I also sanded the oxidation off the pure copper bus bars before installing it. Our friend, the cutoff wheel, steps in to get these bus bars to the correct length. Wear a mask and eye protection for this step. I have a fifth hole that I left at 9 sixteenths in these series bus bars, and I tap threads for an M4 socket head cap screw. This screw will be used to attach sense wires for a BMS system or smart charger. Again, I use electrical tape to make it slightly less likely that if I drop this ratchet, things will go flash. I file and sand the bus bars to make sure we get a good connection on meeting surfaces. The Nissan Leaf modules must be using some special coating or copper alloy because their terminals never seem to discolor over time. This is generic battery terminal protector. You can buy it at any auto parts store. It mostly just keeps moisture out of the connections. Here I am installing the first series bus bar. It connects two modules in parallel and then connects them in series with the next set of two modules that it also connects in parallel. The small M4 socket head cap screw will be used for sense wires from a balancing charger. You need to be careful when installing your bus bars. Think twice and connect once. I removed only the four bolts that are the correct location as a reminder that if I were to place this bus bar in the wrong spot, it could short out four modules and cause excitement. With the installation of this second bus bar, we now have a 24 volt battery, although I still need to install the terminal ends that make the two modules in parallel and have a 5 16 bolt to screw cables into. Again, I use a paper template for this terminal connection plate. The only two holes that have critical spacing are the two for the leaf terminals. I use a 9 16 hole to be tapped for the M4 sense terminal, quarter inch holes for the M6 bolts in the leaf modules, and a 7 64 hole that will be tapped for the 5 16 bolt. It takes almost a minute to cut this wide bus bar off, and the piece of copper is too hot to touch when it falls to the floor. I'm using a 5 16 bolt for the terminal lug and an M4 screw for the sense terminal. I use both thread locker and a lock washer to try to make sure that this bolt doesn't move when I tighten down a nut on top to hold a cable lug. You can also reach under the copper plate with another wrench to hold the head of the bolt if needed. Watching this video after the fact, I can't believe that I forgot to take off my wedding band while doing this. If I had accidentally touched that ring across the gaps in any of those bus bars, it would not have ended well for my finger. Please remember to remove conductive jewelry when working around electricity.
Okay, you've just seen a montage of me putting this sucker together. I have two modules in parallel, wrapping around in series to another two in parallel, wrapping around in series to another two in parallel. So if you add them all up, they're about 8 volts each. Um, it's not fully charged right now, but between these two guys here, I get 23.8, 24 volts. So it's basically a 24 volt nominal battery system. Um, the voltages are a little bit lower than with lead acid, but it can go down lower as well. Now, you might be tempted at this point to grab a couple cables and hook it up to your inverter and test it out. Um, you probably don't want to do that. We need to add a few things still. So we need at a minimum a fuse. I'm going to be putting in a resettable circuit breaker so I can use it as a main disconnect as well. Um, and I also have sense terminals on a lot of these bus bars here and I can hook into those screws there. So it's going to have wires coming off of each of these guys, just small sense wires so that a battery charger can sense the voltage of each individual cell inside the pack and make sure they're all staying equalized. Um, I'm probably also going to be putting a cover because like between here and here there's a about three quarters of an inch and it's separating eight volts at hundreds of amps. So um, we're going to be putting some spacers between those and a cover over the top to cover pretty much everything except the main lugs for the main high current output. Um, that way if somebody were to drop a wrench or a screwdriver, um, it wouldn't you know, span a couple of bus bars and weld itself, you know, spot weld itself and then just have a, a short circuit in there. Um, so this is the mechanical design and build of the battery. We have another video I'm going to be making which will be all of the accessories that are circuit breakers and sensing wires for the charger um, and a meter that will look at the voltage and the amperage going in and out. So that will be coming up later.